Welcome to this lecture on flow sheeting and alternative designs. This is all part of step three, generate designs and redesigns. Flow sheets are handy tools to quickly understand the process since they capture the most important elements of the process design in a simple, clear and visual document, which also facilitates communication between different uh, disciplines. For example, technology developers and process engineers. But even more important, they are the starting point for mass balances and for energy balances and for detailed design. There are three main types of uh, flow sheets which are sequentially developed. First, block diagrams, uh, which focus on the key process sections and units and on how materials flow along the process. PFDs, process flow diagrams, are more specific about the type of processes and they also distinguish all process streams and major utilities requirements, mostly heat and power. The third level, the piping and instrumentation diagram, PNID, provides additional information on equipment for instrumentation and control. In this lecture, we will cover the first two levels. For block diagrams, we can look at the process. First, from an overall perspective, and this is called the plan level, where uh, the whole system is a black box and raw materials and utilities go into the system and products and waste streams come out. Then we can open up the black box to identify the different processing sections where significant changes occur and their interconnections through material and utilities streams. This is the function level. And finally, we can zoom in again in each section to identify the different individual processes units. Uh, this is called the equipment level. Let's check this in a generic example with the hypothetical reaction, as you can see in the slide. At the plant level, we have the inputs for both raw materials and water, and in the outputs, we have the main product C as a pure component and some additional streams for byproducts and wastewater. Spoiler alert, the solvent input and the split of byproducts in the outflows is already included here since flow sheeting is an iterative activity and every time that we have new information, the earlier block diagrams should be updated for consistency. Now, for the function level, we already know the overall inflows and outflows. The first section is the reaction and based on the stoichiometry, we also know the product stream. Then, based on thermodynamic properties of the product mix, we could say that the main product is recovered by solvent extraction and the organic phase is treated for uh, recovery of the main product C and the solvent, while the aqueous phase is treated to recover valuable byproducts. For the equipment level, we know the inputs and outputs of the uh, processing sections. For the reaction section, only a mixer is needed prior to the reactor. For the recovery section, in addition to the liquid-liquid extraction, another mixer is needed to combine the recycled solvent with the fresh solvent. And finally, the product purification and solvent recovery section um, for all components are separated by boiling points and therefore distillation is applied. Let's take a look at the PDO case. The fermentation stoichiometry is known from week two. And let's assume that sugar cane bagasse is the feedstock instead of glucose. Then a pretreatment step is needed, which could be steam explosion followed by enzymatic hydrolysis. Then the glucose available, then with the glucose available, the fermentation process can take place and the expected outflows are PDO as the main product, biomass and uh, carbon dioxide from the aerobic fermentation and uh, wastewater streams from the pretreatment and downstream process. At the function level, we have first a pretreatment process for biomass followed by the fermentation step and finally the downstream process where pure PDO is obtained. For each section, the additional raw materials and utilities can be allocated. And, for this, uh, and from the stoichiometries of pretreatment and fermentation, we can also allocate the different outflows streams. Now we can open up each subsection. Biomass is first pretreated through steam explosion, followed by filtration, hydrolysis, and again a filtration step. 
then the purified glucose is fermented and the fermentation growth undergoes a sequence of filtration, membrane separation, ion exchange, evaporation and distillation to finally obtain PDO and uh, also the different streams from the downstream process. The next level is the next level of flow sheeting is the PFD process flow diagram and in this case individual blocks for each process unit are replaced by symbols that represent the actual process. Uh, you can see more examples um, in the slide for multiple operations and processes including reactive systems and uh, multi-phase uh, separation units. Um, let's then use those symbols in our block diagram at the equipment level by replacing the blocks with different symbols representing the individual process units. Since the symbols are not standardized, you can make your own choices but uh, they should be consistent and visually informative through the PFT. In addition to the symbols, the PFT also includes uh, equipment codes for a clear identification of a specific process units. The code is a combination of letters and three numbers. Letters refer to the process or operation like R for reactor. Then the first number refers to the uh, process section. In this case, pretreatment is one, fermentation is two, and downstream process is 3. And the next two numbers refer to the sequence in which one type of process unit is present in the process, for example, the two reactors in section 1. The PFD also includes the stream codes. The first number refers to the process section and the next two numbers refer to the sequence of the material flows. The stream numbers are all used in combination with mass flow tables to quickly check the components present in each stream. For alternative designs and for redesigns, we can check the key elements of the process where different options could be considered. In the simplest case, um, the feedstock could be glucose, for example. However, second G feedstocks could uh, also be considered as we saw it earlier. In that case, pretreatment and hydrolysis are necessary, and there are different options that the designer may consider uh, as discussed in, previous, in the previous lecture. Then the bioconversion can take place, and there are different elements that could be adopted, like the strain, which will affect the stoichiometry, the tri performance indicators, and other fermentation variables. Then for the DSP, different options could be considered for the different types of separation like solid liquid or liquid vapor as discussed in week 3. Additionally, process intensification could also be considered. Finally, recirculation and uh, mass and heat uh, integration are also valuable options that can help to improve the process performance in general. And in this way, we can have alternative conceptual process designs or redesigns to then continue with the technical feasibility analysis. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next lecture.